Welcome to our channel. This is podcast episode number one. I'm Matt. And this is Nelly. And we're, and we're here, here to teach, teach you Spanish. Spanish. We're really excited. This is our first uh, podcast. We're really excited because we really would like to share with everybody the easy way uh, how we learn, in my case, English, and in his case, Spanish. So we really want to share with the world, you know, how easy this can be. Um, learning a different language, which is exciting. I am original from Honduras, Central America. Uh, so my native language, did I say native? It's native, but that's Native fine. language is Spanish. I came here to the United States um, for college. So I came here with zero English. And I started uh, the third day that I arrived to this country. I went to college with no English whatsoever. And I was taking regular classes and start taking ESL, English as a second language uh, classes as well. So I can uh, relate with somebody learning a different language start up from zero and then just being thrown in a country where they don't speak your language. So um, that's how I came here and learned English. I am obviously not from Honduras. Uh, my name is Matt and I am from the United States of America. Uh, native born gringo but i do speak a little bit of spanish un poco de espanol and vamos a aprender como hablar la idioma romántica let's let's define <laughs> so the audience for this show um you're gonna have to have a good understanding of english first because we're going to be explaining um these spanish uh language concepts in english and then in, in spanish so obviously the 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 target audience for this show is native English speakers who want to learn Spanish, if that isn't obvious yet. So you do need to have a basic understanding of English, what's a noun, what's an adjective, what's an adverb, um, because in the first, the first, well, the second episode of this podcast, we're going to go through the 100 most used words in the Spanish language, and uh, they're kind of separated by uh, word categories, so nouns, adjectives, adverbs, uh, etc. Let's see here. We're going to teach you what you can't learn in the textbooks. Yeah. I took two years of Spanish in high school and almost, well, I wouldn't say all of it was wrong, but like, for example, um, they teach you Castilian Spanish in school, which is not really the Spanish that people speak in Central America. Like, for example, um, the verb, uh, the verb tense or the conjugation vosotros. No, yeah. Nobody uses it in Latin America. Almost Just nobody. Spain. The goal of the show, we're going to teach you Spanish that you don't learn in the textbooks. The right? most common. The most common. The most, the, most, common. the most practical. Practica, popular, that everybody speak on the streets. Yep. And the best thing is here, you know, I didn't, I had to learn Spanish as an English speaker. So I can share with you what, what worked for me, what didn't work for me. Uh, we'll, we'll focus on the most effective the most effective learning techniques and the things to learn in this show. So I think you'll get a really good benefit out of it. And the other thing uh, I'll, I'll use as a teaching device is the mnemonic devices. So like what that means is, um, well, we'll get into that, but it's, it's a way to kind of trick your brain into remembering um, words. Like for example, for the mm -hmm. color pink, I always confuse the color pink and the color red in Spanish because they kind of sound the same. Uh, pink is rosa, mm -hmm. and red is rojo. Now they kind of start. They both start with the R, and they both have four letters. But the way I remember it is rosa is the rose. The rose is pink. Now, okay, roses are red, but in this case, the Spanish rose is pink. That's how <laughs> I remember it. 
That's a mnemonic device. Oh, that's pretty good. That's a mnemonic device. So <laughs> it's a way of, of keeping it straight in my head. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to use mnemonic devices. We're going to interact with our audience uh, through live streams eventually. I'd like to bring in guests from other parts of uh, Latin America, okay. potentially Spain. If we, uh, if you know anybody from Spain, we'll bring them on the show. And why should you learn Spanish? In at least in North America, or the Americas, it's the I'd say the second most, if not the most important language to know aside from English. Yeah. Yeah. And here's here's why I think about it. So the three the three most spoken widely spoken languages in North America are obviously English, Spanish, and Brazilian Portuguese. So if you know two out of those three languages, you can pretty much go anywhere from the very bottom tip of Chile all the way up to Alaska and yeah. you can communicate with people. It's powerful. Very good. So aside from being the second most uh, commonly spoken language in the US, it is also the fourth most widely spoken language in the whole world. Like you can go easily Central America, Costa Rica, Honduras, Guatemala, El Salvador, Panama, Nicaragua, Mexico, you know, in all the countries in South America, uh, just for vacation, which are beautiful uh, countries to visit and enjoy for a very uh, low cost vacations. So that would be awesome. If you know the language and you know how to move around, you know, and go to all these awesome, amazing places. And... It's going to open doors for you. Yeah. And do you love authentic street food? Would you love, is that taco, is that tacos ta talking to you? Eat me, Nelly. Then go Mexico. Go to Mexico, learn Spanish, because the people who sell street food probably don't speak English. Do you like plantains? Do you love fried plantains? Oh, go to Honduras. Here's where we're going with this. So, obviously, um, there, in, in all of these countries we've been talking about, people will speak English at the touristy places, right? If you go to an all-inclusive resort in Cozumel, Mexico, everybody's going to speak English. They will. Um, but if you if you want to get off the beaten path, because you, if you go to an all-inclusive resort in Cozumel, Mexico, you're not going to get any culture. Authentic. Mm -hmm. You're gonna you're, you're gonna get. I mean, the food might be close to authentic because you have mm -hmm. native people making the food, but they're gonna they're gonna put a they're gonna put a, a twist. gringo twist on it because gringos aren't used to eating authentic you know mexican yeah. food if you go to cosmo for example so when when i go, when we go vacationing i don't really yeah. like staying at those all-inclusive resorts because i don't get i don't get the people i don't i don't get to interact with the locals i don't get the culture i want to go i want to go out and be on the street i want to go to the group i want to shop where the locals shop you know oh, i want to market eat. get fresh vegetables and fruit oh, and those fresh vegetable meat. markets are the best fresh meat you just go there you wait for the butcher you know to be done and then you pick the piece of meat that you want right there is still warm so that is a very awesome experience you know like the fruit is amazing like right from the tree pretty much so here's a here's a great reason another great reason why you'd want to learn spanish is obviously i have i have a smartphone and i've got I've got unread messages, but also, <laughs> but also I have Google translate, right? So I can literally, I can literally say Google translate. Let's just try it right now. Oh uh, yeah. The Google voice, Google, Google translate. Now let's just try this Spanish to English. Okay. Buenos días, ¿cómo están? Esperamos que les encante nuestro show y que puedan aprender español. Good morning, how are you? We hope you love our show and that you can learn Spanish. That was actually pretty good. That was good, but extremely good. You but were speaking very slowly. I was speaking slowly. I was using very simple words and simple sentences, very um, structured sentences. So, um, granted, I have a 
powerful computer in my pocket that can translate yeah, it's um, pretty good. spoken Spanish. But Google Translate is not infallible. Um, case in point, uh, your dad was visiting. Your dad's a farmer, coffee farmer from Honduras, right? Yes. Very campesino. He, he speaks a very unique Spanish from and, the farm. And my mom and dad are visiting. They're, they are like conservative uh, um, farmers, f retired farm couple uh, from the Midwest. And they don't, my mom speaks a little bit. I mean, you know, she knows a couple She's words. She's pretty good. She's into very sweet. Trying to learn other languages. But we had your dad talking to Google Translate. And it was not anywhere close to what he was saying. It was like gibberish. So in that <laughs> in that one instance, I think if you get authentic, like if, if you're not talking very slowly and using very uh, commonly used words and using the no slang words, Google Translate should work. But if if you're not doing, you know, if you're talking like a normal human being, Google Translate is probably going to. Yeah, mess it up. Mess it up. Um, that's enough of that. But, but it's it's very good, you know. Like uh, that's a extremely extremely helpful and good tool for you to just go by, you know. Yeah, well, it's it's. I'm not saying don't use Google Translate. No, Just it's don't amazing. don't rely on it 100 percent because you the the goal of learning a language is being able to speak it fluently. I think exactly that's and the be, end goal. Be able to understand, you know, and and. Understand what the other person is saying, you know, like. And being able to give them a meaningful reply. Exactly. Um, yeah. Another gr another great reason why you'd want to learn Spanish is uh, I see Spanish as kind of a, um, not only is it very important to learn in North America, but it's once you learn it, or at least well enough, it kind of becomes a gateway language to learning other languages. Yeah. Uh, for example, all of the Romance languages, uh, such as uh, Spanish, Italian, uh, French, Portuguese, Portuguese uh, Catalan, um, all of those languages are, are based off of, of the Latin root language. So you'll see a lot of common root words, nouns, mm -hmm. and verbs. And can you speak to your experience um, as a native Spanish speaker learning Brazilian Portuguese? Would you say it was easier? It was a thousand times much easier. The first time that I was, when I started learning English, I thought that it was going to be impossible. It was so difficult the very first time. But then after you learn the first language, it's like you open this other part of your brain that you were not using and it just ready to, to learn other languages. Can you give some examples of words that are the same in, or same or very similar in Portuguese and Spanish? Você gosta cafezinho. Gosta is to like. In Spanish, is gusta. Gosta. Cafezinho. Café. In Spanish, cafezinho. Uh, você. Usted. Yeah. yeah so. uh, it's, it's very similar in the way of the pronunciation. All of those little parts yeah. individually have something very have a very similar meaning in Spanish. So I think you know, like agua gelada, agua is agua in Spanish water, the same word. Gelada is cold in Spanish is helada, quente, caliente, hot. I found a lot of uh, very similar words. Okay. Um, so another great reason for learning Spanish or any new language, any new language is, uh, for brain development. So whether or not, whether you're in, and this is something that yeah. you can pick up at any age, whether you're six or you're 60, um, or learning 80, new, 90, a hundred, you know I mean? There is no limitations. Learning a new language is keeps that, keeps those neurons firing, keeps your brain active, keeps, um, it keeps, you're using more of your brain than you would be for, um, if you were just speaking one language. The only thing is that the younger you are, when you start learning it, the better you will be with the accent. This is true. Yeah, so like I will never get rid of my accent, my thick accent. That's why I married you. <laughs> Which that, that made me cute, he said that, so. Um, I always kind of see us like, uh, have you ever seen the show Modern Family? 
Al Bundy. Uh, I forget I forget the name of his character on the show, but uh, Ed, o- Ed O'Neill and Sofia Vergara. Yeah. Um, that's <laughs> that's us. That's us. Yeah, we do we do a Spanglish at home. Well, like... I think I, I probably speak more Spanish than Al Bundy, honestly. <laughs> yes, oh, you do. Um, so going back to the brain thing, um, there are there are studies that show learning a, a a second language will delay the onset of Alzheimer's disease. Oh yeah, this is true. Um, for me, the the great value in learning um, the reason I like to learn Spanish is there's multiple reasons. Um, it's it's a way to understand better the history of the language and the people who speak that language. Um, and for me, it allows me to actually, now I married a Latina, all of Nelly's in-laws, um, all of them, well, a few of them speak a little bit of English, but for by and large, all of them speak Spanish. So if I want to communicate with any of them, I have to learn. Yeah. And that's a great, the best way you can improve your, if you do, if you already speak Spanish, you want to get better, find somebody who doesn't speak English and try to communicate with them. That is the best yeah. way because it forces you. There's no crutch, right? And you get immediate feedback. If they don't understand what you're saying, they will give you the deer in the headlights look. So you'll you'll be able to figure out if they're understanding you or not. So here's um, I'm gonna I'm gonna um, back up what you were saying. Now I think uh, in order uh, when you were saying about understanding a foreign language. Um, I think by learning Spanish, you unlock not only different parts of the world that you wouldn't necessarily be able to travel, but also you're unlocking forms of literature, uh, books, uh, poetry, okay. movies, uh, TV shows. You're music. unlocking music. You're unlocking. So here's this is this is you get a double benefit because not only by reading books in Spanish, watching movies in Spanish, watching TV shows in Spanish, watching telenovelas watching um uh other other types of uh media in a foreign language you 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 you're practicing listening or reading and mm-hmm. you're you're getting little bits of culture also without even knowing it so you're it's a double benefit because you're 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 able to partake in this media that you wouldn't otherwise mm-hmm. be able to but you're also improving your understanding of that language at the same time yes and here's another interesting thing. I'm going to take a little diversion. So um, by learning a language, you're learning about the history of the people who speak the language. Yeah. Because the language is a living thing. It changes over time. 2,000 years ago, the Spanish language didn't exist as it does today. English did not exist as it does today 2,000 years ago. You know? So... Um, there's a very specific reason. Yes, it evolves over time. So by studying a language, you can study the history of these people. For example, did you know, Nelly, that there are many, many, many words in Spanish that come from Arabic? I didn't know. And do you know why? No. Because from the uh, around 700 uh, AD, the Moors from Africa... Uh, invaded the Iberian Peninsula, so the, the, the peninsula where Spain and Portugal mm-hmm. are, um, and basically conquered that part of Europe and reigned there for wow. 700 years. Just over 700 years. So from about 780 to about 14... Arabic was spoken? Yeah. Wow. Arab kings. Yeah. So it was a mixture then of it was Arab a mixture, and yeah. Spanish, and... and some of the that's some of these old, the really old towns in Spain are really fascinating because it's really uh, it's a mixture of the three main um, uh, the three main what do you call it? Uh, uh, <clears throat> I'm gonna mispronounce it. the the faith The faiths that are derived from Abraham, um, Islam, Judaism, and Christianity all coexisted in medieval Spain under Moorish rule. The Moors, the Moors allowed people to, to uh, practice their own faith. Wow. Yeah. So let's take a look at some of the 
um, Arabic loan words that are actually in Spanish. We were looking at these earlier, Nelly. Yeah. I are some of these so surprising to you? Like... A lot of them start with A. Aceite, oil, aceituna, olive, adobe, adobe, like to make homes, like uh, bricks. Alfombra. Aduana, alfombra. Wow. A lot of them. Arroz. Albahaca, like the basil. Arroz. Arroz. Rice. Aldea, village, alfalfa. Azúcar. Algodón, cotton. Almacén, store. Almanaque, almanac. Tamarindo. Tamarindo, yeah. That's a, that's a plant. Azote, whip. Oh, Zanahoria. My, that was my favorites. My dad's favorites were azote when we were growing up. So a lot of these words, <laughs> a lot of these words that start with uh, a in Spanish will probably, if very likely, be have uh, be borrowed from from the Arabic language. I didn't know. That's amazing. So here's here's another great example um, to piggyback on what you were just saying. So I. I used to travel a lot for my job in uh, in engineering, and I would meet with people from different countries. And I think this is just my own opinion, but I, I believe it's true, is that um, obviously most people in, in a business setting would be expected to know English and speak English. But by going that extra mile and learning a little oh, bit yeah. of their language shows that you care. It shows that you care and that you're respectful of their culture. So, for example, if I if I go to yeah. Japan and I, I somebody they come to, if uh, somebody's coming to pick me up at the hotel and I say uh, oh, "Oihao gozaimasu," and they just completely take them by surprise, and they all of a sudden their face lights up. Yeah. And they're like, oh, oh, yes, good morning, good morning. You learn, you speak Japanese. It's like, no, sorry, <laughs> I speak one word. <laughs> but it's a great icebreaker. Oh, yeah. It's a great icebreaker. It's very appreciative yes. knowing that somebody else is interested in your language and that making that effort to communicate with you, that make a huge, huge difference. Caring is really important. I just remember what my daughter say. Sharing is caring, mommy. Mommy, sharing is caring. No fighting, no yelling. Well, that's all we have time for today, kids. We're going to wrap this up. Like, comment, and subscribe. And stay tuned for more Learn Spanish Now. We hope to see you soon. See you soon. You will not regret it. Bye-bye. Let's do the teach you Spanish like we're saying it together. Yes. I'm Matt. I'm Nelly. And we're here to teach you Spanish. We're supposed to do it together. Let's do it again. I'm so horrible. Okay, let's do it again.